Hello and welcome. This is the Daily Dharma. My name's Dina. Thank you so much for joining. And as usual, we've started with just a couple of cards. Well, I say as usual. Today, we are starting with some cards already laid out. I enjoyed yesterday with the mixed shamanic deck being laid out, and I didn't even notice the absence of having not used the code cards, which when I initially channeled the need for the daily dharma, it was based around the code cards that I I say code cards. I'm going to open this deck, Sacral Chakra Revealed. This deck of cards is the um, Sacred Geometry Activations Oracle deck. All those decks listed below in the description box. So... When I was pre-shuffling that, I got the Divine Masculine popping out on the shuffle, Divine Masculine. And under the deck, I saw discernment. So being able to understand the use of our energy and how to appropriately navigate choice, chance, change, and influence and movement, momentum, being able to grab the steering wheel of our path or trajectory and to be able to navigate appropriately for the higher good, not just the selfish goals or accommodating others to make somebody happy or whatnot. It's understanding the higher purpose behind the behind the the um, urges and desires and and things that come to our attention. So the shamanic deck I laid out really was talking about such a, a transition point. And one of the messages that has been coming through a lot since yesterday, I often do a pull from one of my books. This one was the one yesterday and I got the change rune. I wonder if I could find it. I think it was 35. No. Anyways, another day. Uh, it was talking about that when change becomes necessary, that we really need to understand the urge for change. Is it really necessary or is it just a response or reaction to discomfort, which often growth comes with a certain amount of discomfort to push us out of our comfort zone or discomfort zone as it, as it might be for some of us. And and it was talking about the message that was coming through from that source first and then through a number of other cards and, and things throughout the day was that change has already made itself apparent to us. We've understood the need for change. We've understood that the time was now that we've drug our feet perhaps as long as possible or have attempted multiple different directions enough times that now the inevitable outcome is rapid progress. Rapid progress happens when we've gone through the mental, the ideation, the envisioning, and then we've started to take small steps, and then we've been committed to a goal and have just continued to move in one direction. The outcome becomes it comes slowly at first and then exponentially as the groundwork is laid, then the recognition comes and the magnetism shows and the abundance comes through. So today we are finally seeing some real evidence of the magnetism at play here coming in for us. The first card is number 30 from the mixed shamanic decks here. The Horseman, Herald of Change. So this one was talking in a number of ways. It's like um, some type of success at the, it's, I just was hearing something about Zorro, you know, um, some of you may be too young for the original Zorro imagery, but he would stand at the top of the hill and the horse would wear and he'd be, ah, and he'd take off. Um, I think that was Zorro, was it not? Anyways, in this imagery today, 
I was seeing that there's these ribbons tied around the horse and horse may be an important image for you. Let me think of this. So dragon, this is the year of the dragon. And then we have snake comes next and then horse in Chinese Zodiac, I do believe. Uh, pretty positive. So this might be something that's going to be looked upon from the future in two years, something quite profound having shifted. Oh, and it even says herald of change. I didn't, I mean, it's amazing how I can overlook the simple details sometimes when I'm looking at the imagery. But yes, the horsemen, isn't there also some type of myth about the, the seven horsemen or something? It might be some biblical reference or something, but it's like the... The horse has these laurels and ribbons as though it's been made up in some type of way, but the, the rider appears to be a feminine. And I'm seeing that at her core, she's really lit up and glowing and behind her, I think in this context, it might be a setting sun. Like there, for many of us, there's the sun is setting on a previous way of being, and that is why change is inevitable and necessary and mandatory at this point. And I was seeing that breakthrough as a break open. And then the next card coming through is the crossing, initiation number 54. So this coming directly after this herald, it's like rushing through, breaking open through this change forces us to move through this portal. And I was sensing that it's an unlocking of some type of chakra blockage or something here where then it's um, perhaps all the lower chakras all the way up to the heart and then bubbling up through the throat. So this may be something that you're just now beginning to understand intuitively about your body, about your mission, about your purpose. Something here is breaking through. The writing has been on the wall and the light codes on our auric shield, those cosmic divine soul blueprints are being illuminated and we're understanding having that aha moment that that's what what is demanded of me in this situation and it's like we're rearing to go forward so that brings a lot of momentum through this portal here which is like the eye of the needle card from this mixed deck here where it's talking about that the pathway through this portal is quite narrow but that we've done the necessary preparations, which comes in later here, to make it through this portal. And at first I was kind of seeing this individual going through, but if you're able to see it, oh, probably the camera resolution is not going to, there it is. Can you see that a little bit there? There's all of these little embers and it appears that the flux is pushing this way. And so it's, showing like, okay, in the moment here, I'm also envisioning whether symbolically or literally a birth, a breakthrough conceiving of a birthing of a new way of being a new persona, a new hobby or job or career or purpose or something new being birthed through us for us. And the crossing is, um, kind of pushing us through and it was almost like through the face of the sun which I believe is also sometimes a biblical but also an ascension type of a um, an idea but those things aside I was really seeing how narrow the path has become for this this bridge this section it's like um, so even though it may be symbolic for many of us let's look at the literal birthing process which has been coming through as far as like the gestation period when the pregnancy is happening and when we are incubating either the plan the goal or 
the process of change, moving through the transitioning phase is that narrow pathway. So if the body is is in gestation mode, literally, then we really need to create health, well-being, load up on vitamins, restrain ourselves and abstain from unhealthy things such as smoking, drinking, drugs, um, toxins of any sort. You know, you don't want to stand in, in, in an environment that is really smoky and smoggy in, um, let's say, a factory type environment sometimes. So symbolically, then we can look at that and say, okay, if I've got this goal, if I've got this idea, if I have this calling and purpose, and I've been shown that now is the time, it's like this rapid time of change this is the part during the transition where we really need to be committed to health and well-being and to allow ourselves to be the conduit, the cleansed, clear conduit of the highest, of gestating the highest and best at 11.11 on the counter. So let's keep moving. So you're casting a large shadow here. It's as if at the setting sun or the rising sun, the shadow is the longest. And so it's like that sun has set on something. Now there's this narrow pathway, a narrow escape for some, um, a near miss or a last ditch effort that actually takes root and starts to propel us forward. And, um, I have many more cards here, but when I was taking the end of the deck, I split the deck into two large piles. And in between horsemen and crossing, I have the Time Master. Check this guy out. He always comes through as so reflective, like an ancestor for some, but some timeless being or entity or a cosmic sense of self, that connection that surpasses time and space, that speaks through us and to us. It can be a father type energy, an uncle, a grandfather, somebody, I mean, for some, this may be a fiery individual, somebody with a lot of spunk and pizzazz. In this card, it almost is depicted with this orange curly afro, which doesn't speak to me of somebody in particular that I understand and know, but I think that that's um, for one and not the many. But behind him, he has many of those symbols twisting and turning the cogs of a cosmic system, like the time and space coming into the exact perfect alignment in order to activate, to motivate, to push one through this portal. And he's looking forward. He's overlooking the crossing and the initiation. So the horseman might also rec uh, talk about a vehicle, the vehicle for movement. So watch him. He's overseeing and almost like blowing breath at your back, like this cosmic push, you know, like, like the blowing of a dandelion seed sometimes this, um, through the eye of the sun, it's like pushing you through and motivating you to move forward, guiding, guarding, protecting. And I saw also what's below him, the holy mountain. Um, look at his chest there. There is a rune symbol here. Um, can you see it? It is right there. It's that one that appears like a bow tie. And if you watch the other daily dharmas, yesterday's, that one came through. And I'm not an expert at runes, but I do have a set. And I thought it was something about mirroring and um, that type of thing. But it's actually called in this book that I have right here. Well, first, on this little guide, you can spy those, screenshot those. In here, it calls it Dagaz as home, which is like bringing us home in the home stretch. The ascension is often about walking each other home, 
home being um, the place beyond this time and space, the all, the unified field, whatever you want to take it as. And then I have this book of runes, Ralph H. Bloom. Nice description here. It calls it here, the rune of breakthrough, transformation, and day. So, and one thing else, that crossing initiation card, then the other full stack, the fire card is ahead of that. So it's almost like the sun, but it's not the sun. It feels like this change in transition is going to be somewhat demanding, somewhat fear inducing because it's the unpredictable, the unknown realms that we're facing and walking towards boldly, courageously, but not completely without that fear and that sense of, oh boy, I hope I know what I'm doing. Here goes nothing. The choice is already made. The need has been made aware. Here goes. And that's the 19 card, which is the sun card in the major arcana. So I just want to read a little bit from this book. So this is the final rune in the cycle of initiation which the crossing is the initiation process, making it through that portal and walking the narrow path to bring something fully into fruition comes later here in the readings, often signals a major shift or breakthrough in the process of self-change or a complete transformation in attitude, a 180 degree turn. For some, this transition is so radical, which we keep getting radical reinvention, that they're no longer able to live the ordinary life in the ordinary way. So it's as this, as if we have suddenly embraced our cosmic inheritance and are like moving through and no longer hiding this for others, if that was even a thing for some of us. Because the timing is right, that time master, the outcome is assured, although not from the present vantage point predictable. In each life, there comes at least one moment which, if recognized and seized, transforms the course of that life forever. So this is no small feat. This is a huge change, and it's an exciting change. Rely, therefore, on radical trust even though the moment may call for you to leap empty-handed into the void, literally with that crossing card, with this rune, your warrior nature reveals itself. If this is followed by the blank rune, the magnitude of the transformation might be so great as to portend a death, the successful conclusion to your passage. But death is more like this herald of change. It's that choice point where there's no going back such as in a literal pregnancy it's like you know you can't uh, uh, well you can but that's not what we're talking about it's like when the choice is made to gestate or to bring something through then it's like there we are we have it and um anyways moving on a major period of achievement and prosperity is often introduced by this rune. The darkness is behind you. Daylight has come. Nevertheless, you are reminded not to collapse yourself into thoughts for the future or to behave recklessly in your new situation. Considerable hard work can be involved in a time of transformation. Undertake to do it joyfully. And uh, so all of those things are so incredible in the moment here. So 29 comes next, the horned cactus. So this one came through a little bit challenging for me to read. A couple of things stepping forward. First of all, 29 is the pre card to the 30 card, herald of change. So this here, horned cactus is resourcefulness. And I see this as the daybreak behind and the fire as like the fires of the sun, the blazing, burning hot sun in the desert, perhaps. And the resourcefulness here is how we prepare ourselves, that word again, for the long haul and how we can sustain ourselves 
throughout our lives and for the rest of our time. There's an image right at the crown, just below the 29, and it showed itself in a number of shape-shifting ways. I saw it as that Coco Capelli image for fertility. I saw it as an elder walking with a cane. I also saw it as an individual with a shovel, tending the earth, doing hard manual labor. Um, a number of things it might step through otherwise for you. And so it's sustaining ourselves through old age and those things that are coming to fruition now are going to be of an exponential um, energy whereby we're able to do more with less, but it's going to be more abundant than what we've been prepared or than what we knew, than what we've had in the past, perhaps. So also the horns reminding me of the Taurus new moon was yesterday and the, um, the conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus, that is the big shakeup, the big need for change that showed us in various levels of intensity around April 20th, but it's a, a big impact, so it keeps going. And right now, at the time of this broadcast, we're going to be seeing the sun in what's called Kazemi with, what is it, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, and Uranus. Is it all four of those? Anyways, I'll um, check it out and report back later. But it's when those things come into play, it's similar to eclipse energy, which we're just moving from eclipse energy. And it starts to shed light onto the elements of of whatever the nature of each of those planets wants to convey its message to us. And sometimes the ego or desire nature or temptation or miscommunication, misdirection can sometimes obscure. So it's like twofold, both the obscurity and the clarity are coming forward. And so this card always reminds me here of defensiveness. The horns of the bull remind me of the rune that's the um, three prongs. It's in here, it says, all giz friendship but in the book it talks about the antlers um clearing the way something like that creating space sacred space around the self and so with this resourcefulness i do think that protecting your energies protecting your your legacy your progeny your finance whatever yourself in um, a gentler way and preparing your body for some demanding feat coming forward. So if you're um, doing some manual labor, for instance, or going through labor in general, it's like we prepare the body, we prepare the space, we uh, prepare the individuals around us, then in time, then, then it's um, the dawn of that new day and here goes nothing. So moving forward, we have 52. This one came out yesterday, straddling worlds, wandering between realms. So I'm sensing that this time master in this crossing of the portal, integrating the solar, stellar, cosmic aspects of self, it's like really taking that, if we haven't been taking it seriously enough or in the right ways, preparing our body for a higher consciousness, for our ascension process. There are these huge influxes of energies coming forward right now from these huge coronal mass ejections from the sun and earth is in its direct line of fire, so to speak, in the line of fire, the ring of fire. And so these influences are the golden light codes i call them when we're initiated by the the demands of the life bringer the the spiritual life bringer the animation the divine father yeah like the sun the father and the sun showing us 
the father overseeing. That might speak to some of you with more religious roots, but take it as you must. Here we have next, the earth keeper also came yesterday. That's the 18. We have the 19 here. Um, in this, it seems to be the mother. I, I'm seeing this as mother earth, but also in our... I see that as us being the sadness in the suffering process, moving through that, the crossing, the initiation is moving us out of what didn't work and into the future. And there's this release point, whether it's happy tears or stressed out um, or someone else's fears or, or triggers or emotional flux coming forward. It's the ebb and flow. I'm seeing a Fibonacci conch shell at the temple through the ear area here listening to the flow of the planetary influences here on earth and how they are influencing and and pushing us into this next leg of the journey and um our service to the earth might be related to whatever we are pushing through whatever we're changing in our body in our makeup or in our delivery of our our messages the way that we show up and show out is healing the earth and healing others, aligning us with our cosmic destiny here. And lastly, well, not lastly, we've got two more. Spirit of the river, movement toward adventure. So what was that last line here? Undertake to do it joyfully. So this resourcefulness is our ability to also, to... Ah, to move through the, the ebb and flow of life with some type of grace. Maybe you're moving together with somebody. I intended these to be facing the same direction. In my mind, they were moving in the same direction, but it almost looked like they were moving together. So it's like us moving towards our destiny. And then the spirit of the river here, number 50, it's reminding me of being immersed in the in the energy and fluctuation of the intense emotional movement, helping us to gain momentum and faith and courage from the rivers of, of the flow of our life, the cosmic flow. Um, and it was coming through the other day with us being the rainmaker on the earth keeper card as bringing water to the parched earth, being able to, and you know, the rainmaker reminds me of Aquarius also because it's the water bearer, even though it's an air sign, it has water bearer as its symbol. And, and maybe this is a throwback to that where it's like the spirit of the river. It keeps on flowing to outwards towards the sea backwards towards home and if we go with that Rumi quote where we're all the ocean in a drop it's like we're all reunifying out in the ethers it's like out in a field I'll meet you there is another Rumi quote part of it there's something about this where we're bringing something forward that's very integral to the healing process of the earth and the consciousness herein so under Time Master, the back of that, well, the Time Master was under the deck on the top underneath, but then the next card in line behind Time, well, how do I say that? Time Master on this side, this card from behind here. <laughs> Netcaster, preparations coming to fruition. So something you've been manifesting, something you've been envisioning or hoping, wishing, feeling coming in is coming to fruition. We've created this. We've worked towards it and it's here. So whatever we've been casting that wide net, trying to magnetize, trying to pull in something for self that helps the legacy to be resourceful and to create for the long term is coming to fruition, which is not the flower. It's the fruit. It is the harvest. So the fruit is starting. It's still probably green on the vine and it's going to expand and we're going to be able to watch this coming forward. And then we get from the other side of the fire deck here we have feast of plenty choices and their consequences so for better or for worse 
this is the choice point coming through. I'm seeing the bee, I'm seeing the crystals, the grape vines, so the grapes, wine, Dionysus, the crystal ball. You've been able to see this. You've known that it was coming. You probably had a vision long ago. It's like two individuals working together and this birthing thing keeps coming through. So yeah, discernment was under the deck with the divine masculine. Let's just see if there's anything else here because we are running out of time. We'll go with that. The underneath one to show sacral chakra again so there's and then cosmic flower so birthing something from the depths of your of your sense of security safety belonging um it also has to do with order law limits um security within the body security of finance uh future loved ones being safe and it has to do with one's holdings, comfort seeking, and also pleasure and joy seeking. So the sacral area is ruled by the element of water and it's in the lower abdomen. It also rules the reproductive organs and spleen, bladder, kidneys, blood, and blood sugar. So watching your sugar during this gestation period and getting healthy proteins in your system and working your cosmic muscles as well as your body stretching and muscles to help yourself to not age too quickly. And cosmic flower here is also the 18, that moon energy and authority under that number 10. So I think that that's going to be about all that we can have time for. So let's see. Okay, that one wanted to stay. Amble with contentment. The seahorse is here. The seahorse actually has that pouch and the masculine, the male, is the one who fathers, who nurtures, who carries the babies around in the pouch. Waiting rather than acting is going to be the most advantageous right now, which I sense that this initiation process is going to bring a lot of momentum. So this waiting is going to be that preparation for harvest, the preparing the systems for when the speed picks up and everything starts going. And this may challenge us with attention, recognition, demands of those around us. But there's a way that we can navigate that with a lot of energy and um, presence if we take ourselves very seriously in self-care in the preceding moments to when activity is necessary. Take good care of yourself and check back for more messages soon. And we'll see you very soon. Bye, guys.